okay so the following situations hamper the efforts to achieve optimum glycemic control in hospitalized patients so there must, might be some conditions in this hospitalized patient uh, which despite of starting uh, intensive insulin regimen in, intensive insulin regimens we don't start uh, much in hospitalized patients so despite of insulin therapy uh, some conditions might not let you achieve that glycemic control so what are these a infection b steroid therapy c fever d surgical trauma and e all of the above this is a very easy question okay, we already have lot of answers and the maximum again goes for option e right so everybody has written option e uh, dr zeba has written option e uh, dr sheela has given option b okay so all the options are e Dr. Sheila has just mentioned option B, mm -hmm. and Dr. Gopi has mentioned option B. Okay. Other than that, everybody has mentioned option E. Okay. All of the above. Option uh, Dr. Shilpa has given option B. Okay. So E is the right answer. It's all of the above. So even a critically ill diabetic patient, if he landed uh, into infection or any kind of fever, his glycemic targets might not achieve. As I've already mentioned, steroid therapy. If the patient is put on high dose glucocorticoid therapy, then uh, again the glycemic uh, control can be hampered. Uh, sugar levels might be raised and uncontrollable. Then any kind of surgical trauma is there. Uh, even in uh, some conditions, am I audible? Uh, yes, doctor, you are. Okay. So uh, the right answer is all of the above. In all the conditions, uh, there can be uncontrolled uh, blood sugar levels and uh, glycemic target might not be achieved. One more I need to add. Uh, if you have put a patient on immuno, any kind of immunosuppressive medications or if you have started um, uh, any enteral or parenteral nutrition, then in both of these conditions, again, you might see that your optimum glycemic targets have not been achieved with the patient. So here I have covered key what all can affect the glycemic targets. Can we have the next slide, please? Doctor, the fourth question is here, sliding scale insulin. So, um, sliding scale, I hope uh, all of you are aware of this term, which is used for insulin. And this may be useful in certain conditions except I can already see the answer. So I was about to explain the sliding scale. But as you uh, all Dr. Dilip has given that he wants to have the explanation in fever condition. Uh, can we have the questions in the last? So I can throw, uh, go through all the um, questions in your chat box and I'll answer one by one in the end. Uh, yes, doctor. But I think this is regarding the last slide. Last slide, that is the last question. Last question. Can we have the last slide again, please? Yes, doctor. Okay. Uh, what is the question? Uh, you want explanation regarding fever? Uh, yes, doctor. Dr. Dilip would like to know uh, about fever condition. Uh, okay, so um, doctor, what happens uh, if a diabetic patient is having fever? So uh, this fever uh, increases a few hormones in the body, uh, basically the stress hormones, example, epinephrine, which is also known as adrenaline, because he has to fight the illness or infection or fever-like condition. So in response to that, we will increase the stress hormones like epinephrine. This epinephrine is responsible to Raise your blood sugar levels. 
I hope I'm clear in your, in explaining your question. Doctor, any other doubt you would like to know? Uh, I think, doc uh, Doctor, we can take the next question answers we already have. Yes, please. Okay, so a sliding scale, as you already know, insulin may be useful in certain situations. So we have uh, option B by Dr. Gokul and Raghavi. Dr. Okay. Sirish would uh, have answered C option. Dr. Okay. Hafsa again B. Dr. Sa uh, Salom doc, uh, option D. Jo uh, Dr. Josna option B. Uh, Dr. Okay. Aruna, Dr. Ziba has given an option A. Dr. Kiran option B. Dr. Sharad option B. So there is again a mixed crowd. Dr. Okay. Janiwala has given option D, Dr. Sara B, and Dr. Deepa has, and Dr. Vinil has given option C, Dr. Mohammed has given option D, Dr. Nagaraju has given option D, Dr. Sumit has given option B, Dr. Harisha Sundar has given option B, Dr. Dilip has given option B, Dr. Sheila has given option B. Okay. Dr. Aritika has given option B. We are still getting the answers. Dr. Pritpal has given option B and Dr. Sharad has given option A. Okay. So B is the correct answer. Dr. Mayank has also given option B. Okay. So sliding scale insulin is not given in septic shock. It is given in physiological adjustment of a preprandial insulin. It is given along with basal insulin analogs, example, insulin glargy. And the last option, it is also given in evaluating patients' initial response to insulin. Uh, let me explain this to you. The sliding scale uh, for insulin is wherein a regular insulin is used commonly to control the blood glucose levels. Let me explain you in a simpler form. At a given blood glucose level, sliding scale delivers the same number of units of subcutaneous regular insulin to every patient. So these levels are fixed. But what is the drawback is that uh, they are designed only to correct the therapeutic inadequacies that are there. So uh, this might not take into consideration uh, for the future uh, glycemic control of the patient, this will temporarily work on the targeted blood sugar levels. Without, if they are given alone, uh, they are of no use on a long term basis. Uh, but if these sliding scales are given along with any other insulin analog, as we have already seen the basal insulin analog or any short or rapid acting insulin, this uh, gives the corrected supply of glucose on a long term basis. So this sliding scale is uh, not much practiced and uh, typically not in any critical ill patients. If in any critical ill patients you want to start sliding scale insulin, you want to give the continuous uh, insulin infusion of a regular insulin, you need to add any short or long acting, uh, uh, sorry, rapid acting insulin along with it for more efficacy to be specified. Am I clear um, explaining this question? Uh, yes, doctor. Any questions related to this slide? Okay. So no, let's, doctor. Okay. Let's move to our last question for today. Then in the last, we can have uh, the question answer round. Uh, doctor, we do have one question. In septic shock, vasopressors are used, which leads to vasoconstriction. So, mm -hmm. SC injection does, doesn't does work. So, uh, what is the name of the doctor? Dr. Sumit. So, he has wonderfully explained uh, why the option is the odd, uh, odd man out. So, Thank you for that. So it's very well explained ki why we don't give a sliding scale in septic shock. Can we have the next slide, please?
so this is the last uh, question uh, from today's case scenario definitely here i will be covering the management part of diabetes in critically ill patient rest of the part is uh, already covered this patient uh, came to you with let me recall with subacute intestinal obstruction now you have advised in total parenteral nutrition if you can recall the case scenario now ideally what this patient should be started with what Uh, can be the mode of treatment is it a continuous insulin infusion is it b regular insulin added to tpl infusion is it c nph that is neutral protamine hexadone which is being added to tpl infusion so what are the right answer is it both a and b is it both a and c is it either a b or c please take your time go through the options and please pour your answers in uh, the dr. chat dr hafsa and dr vinil has given option e dr uh, okay. dr ragavi has given option a dr aruna and dr nagarajo has given c dr sharath and dr zeba has given option okay so uh, and uh, dr pritpal has given option b dr hari sundan has given option a dr jani bala has given option e dr sheela has given option d dr nandita has given option a dr josna has given option e okay do we have more answers dr trupti has given option a dr dilip has given option um a dr josna yes uh, doctor no more options okay so for all those who have given answer i think most of the answers are b right or is it e it is a option and option e few have given option d as well doctor okay so for all those who are uh, many confused options i can see for all those who have given the option c let me explain you the difference in the mode of management when it comes to the critically ill patient who has been put on enteral nutrition and the other who has been put on a uh, total parenteral nutrition if a patient is on enteral nutrition uh, you have to start with continu continuous insulin infusion first but for intermittent enteral feedings uh, we have to start intermittent enteral feedings to the same patient then we have to add this nph insulin but in very small doses of regular insulin and this is before each feed the patient takes okay then uh, when we uh, go for capillary glucose testing before each enteral feed this will help us to decide uh, the level of insulin dose that is to be adjusted okay so for continuous feeding once or twice daily this long acting insulin can be used this is the ideal insulin of choice uh, when it comes to enteral nutrition now let me explain uh, the mode of management when it comes to parenteral nutrition uh, in a patient receiving total parenteral nutrition first we start with the continuous insulin infusion this will provide uh, our uh, adequate glycemic target then an alternative regimen is also started in which we add a regular insulin to this tpl infusion and uh, this is calculated as it is based on the grams of carbohydrate that we are putting in the infusion uh, so uh, as i can recall a reasonable initial regimen is one unit of insulin 
for every 15 gram of carbohydrates in the TPN infusion. So if we are giving 15 gram of carbohydrate uh, to the TPN infusion of the patient, we have to add one unit of insulin. This is a baseline. This carbohydrate and insulin ratio, we have to adjust according to the patient blood glucose levels. So if they are on the higher side, we need to increase it. If they are on, if it is on the lower side, we need to decrease it. So uh, yeah. the correct answer is both A and B that uh, in a patient receiving total parenteral nutrition, we have to start continuous insulin infusion and then we have to add regular insulin to this uh, TPN infusion. Yes.